I'm Martin Smith. I'm an artist, designer, craftsperson. Things that I make tend to be mechanical objects or kinetic in some way, usually employing some kind of movement that's activated by interference with them, whether it be through dropping a coin in or turning a handle or pressing a button. I want people to be part of the work. I'm looking to amuse people. I'm looking to make people think. I'm trying to make beautiful things. I started out making very pure automata, but very quickly I realised the car figure wasn't what I was interested in. I was interested in the machinations underneath, the things that were happening, the mechanics. The idea of making machines that aren't utilitarian, they're not a kettle that's helping you boil water or a car that you can drive. They're there just for their own sake. Everything I put out in the world, I tend to be making myself, even sometimes down to very, very small components. I'm at my happiest when I'm making. Apart from the parts I make, you might think they've come from a factory. I'm on a lathe several hours a day making parts. I'm on a welder. I'm cutting parts out as well with plasma cutters or laser cutters. It's really important that these are handmade. It's making, 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 I suppose. I like problem solving, but I'm also the creator of those problems because actually people are really content with the first one. I'm the one who's finding problems with them. They go, okay, oh, I want to solve that and how can I improve that? I suppose when that ends, the work becomes less interesting to me. So then I'll find a different problem within it I can solve, whether it's scale or speed or quantity quite often. Sometimes I'll make a mass of them. So there'll be like 50 applause machines rather than just one. And sometimes those problems are engineering ones. So, okay, I don't like the way the motor sounds, so I'm going to change the motor. How do I find a motor that's so suitable for this? How do I hide that motor? How do I make the machines so quiet that you can hear the applause perfectly? I think there's always something to solve. That's what I'm interested in. I make a whole series of love machines. Started off with a very sickly heart beating machines, which I love, but they sit on the cliff edge of Twee I talk about. And I quite like this idea of trying to walk along the cliff edge of Twee, but not fall into Twee. And hopefully I do it, but I also don't mind if I do fall in because I know I can get out. With the hearts, as the hammer hits over thousands of times, the heart starts to get a little bit impacted, the percussion sort of wears the paint away. That's a kind of a wear and tear show of, of somebody using that machine to sort of demand attention from the person maybe who bought it, like ding, ling, ling, where's my cup of tea sort of thing. The humour in the hearts is the process of somebody gifting it to somebody else. That's where the humour happens. I don't ever see that happen. The person who usually comes to the studio and buys one off me, they're really happy because they can sort of see what's going to happen, that this is going to be well received. I'm not trying to ape nature, I'm trying to make a different version of nature and whether that's maybe with a mechanical water where you drop a coin in and it ripples out. That's not me trying to replicate water because the water might be yellow. So it's like you're dropping a coin into the sun and it's rippling out. I've made public art that sits and it works as you approach it and then after you leave it'll stop. I remember talking to somebody who was saying I'm just going to sit here till it stops and I tried to explain to this person it won't stop until you leave. So this piece was working on a sense it would just continuously work until this person got up and left but they were happy just to sit there and enjoy it. Humour runs through all of them, definitely, but not always in your face and saying, ha ha, here I am, I'm an applause machine, or here I am, I'm pulling a raspberry at your face. Sometimes it might be just the fact that I'm making a tree that looks like a tree, potentially moves a little bit like a tree, but it's not, it's a machine, it's repeating its motion, it's made out of steel, made by me, and not trying to look like an organic tree, but in the landscape it looks like a tree until you visit it and you understand it and you touch it. The same principles apply to the heart that apply to the kinetic tree. It's coming from the same person. It's the same qualities underpin it, wanting to make something beautiful, putting something out in the world that's beautiful, making people watch them, enjoy them, interact with them. I don't really mind if nobody buys it. I'm happy for it to stay with me. And it's almost like a bonus that people are very generously want to buy it and own it and take them off me. <laughs>